Hello, I'm Steve Noes. I'm here for Woodcraft today. I'm one of the many sales associates uh, the store has. Um, we all tend to have a specialty. Mine is wood turning. And I'm often asked about uh, the different techniques in wood turning and also sharpening. We're here today to uh, talk about sharpening all your basic traditional tools. We're going to uh, work through the technique for, for each of them. Uh, when you undertake wood turning, the, the most important thing to learn is how to put a good sharp edge on your tools. Uh, you can accidentally make good cuts with good sharp tools, even if you don't know a lot about the technique you're using. However, all the technique in the world won't get you anywhere without a good sharp edge on your tools, and we're here today to help you out a little bit with that and uh, walk you through the steps to get each of these types of tools up and ready in a way that will make you very happy with the cuts that result. The final one and probably the daddy of all the tools is the bowl gouge. There's so many uh, uses for this uh, that we could talk about that all day. Uh, but basically we're going to show you how to put a nice fingernail grind on this that will uh, be very useful in a lot of different purposes. Okay, the next tool we're going to work on is our bowl gouge. Uh, we're going to use this attachment again. We're going to put a little fingernail grind on this, sweep it back a little bit. Very popular grind, uh, made popular partly by uh, David Ellsworth. He's a master turner and he uses this grind a lot for, for good reason. It's a very versatile and useful grind and uh, I think you'll find it uh, a lot of fun to use. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with our attachment. We're going to get our tool in here. We're going to make sure we put it in about the same distance every time. We can use our little block here uh, for our gauge and we get it anchored down nice and tight so it won't move on you. Again, with every, as with every other tool, we're going to match our bevel angle to the angle of the wheel so that they made up. Doesn't look bad. So again with this, it's one sweeping motion from side to side. This extra long handle makes it a little more unwieldy, but uh, it's uh, still quite doable. Okay, we've got to start at it, but we can see that we've got a little adjustment here to do. We're not quite mating up, uh, have a little adjustment on this end. Some of the adjustments are fairly small and subtle. And the more you use the system, you get fairly accustomed to noticing where the adjustment needs to be made and how to do it fairly efficiently. Just walk it around one last time and have a look at this. On this side we're perfect, dead solid perfect there, but we still got a little bit more metal to take there. So we'll work on that side, match it up with the other one. Getting pretty close there. One more go ought to get us. Okay, now we're looking pretty good. One thing to keep in mind is that the jig isn't controlling the shape of the tool. You are. Uh, you can control how much metal you take off each side, where you take it off, by how much time you spend on the wheel in that position. So uh, this helps you uh, control what you're doing, but you're still in control of the shape. Thanks for watching our presentation on sharpening today. Uh, I hope you uh, 
uh, can use some of these techniques to make your turning a little more enjoyable. If you have any questions or, or uh, problems implementing some of these, come on down to your local woodcraft and we would love to walk you through it, help you with any problems or concerns or questions. Uh, that's why we're here. So uh, come on down. We'd love to see you in the store and uh, happy turning.